All right, here's our cell structure review. Again, this is meant to be a review, not a first time through, so you can go back and look at other videos um, on the cell structures. And so we're gonna start off here with our monomer, the phosphate, uh, the phospholipid. Um, this is a structure that makes up all cell membranes, and cell membranes are what regulate a lot of the processes that happen in the cell. Remember the phosphate uh, head is polar because the electron, there's an extra electron right here on this oxygen, oops. Get my thing. There we go. It's an extra electron on that oxygen right there, giving it a slightly negative charge. Uh, the polarity of that molecule causes a phosphate, uh, a phospholipid, to form a bilayer. The fatty acid tails attached to the phosphate head. This is a glycerol, right? Um, these fatty acid tails. These are nonpolar, giving this phosphate a polar, uh, polar nature. And so when it forms uh, a layer, we get a bilayer. In the exterior of this phospholipid, right, this is the polar water region. Water is also polar, don't forget, because oxygen pulls electrons toward itself from the hydrogens. So we have a slight positive charge in this region up here and a slight negative charge down here. So when we double layer our phospholipids, we get that bilayer, we have a polar nonpolar sandwich. And so the phospholipids themselves align their fatty acid tails towards the interior of that so membrane, and the exterior is the polar heads. So the interior of the cell is polar because it's mostly water. The cytosol is a lot of water. And the exterior of our cell is typically aqueous, so there's also water out here, and those polar regions line up with polar regions on the phosphate. The nonpolar region is isolated on the inside of the membrane, and that leads to the necessity of some other structures. So here's a, a, a larger membrane um, or another portion of a membrane. Remember, membranes can include these proteins. So we've got multiple kinds of proteins um, embedded in the membrane here. This one, this large one here in the middle, is called an integrin protein or an integral protein because it spans the width of the cell membrane. So this could be a protein channel of some kind. It could allow things in and out. Um, if it's a, a, remember, water is a potential, or is a particular el or molecule that needs to be transported through the membrane, not necessarily active transport where you're using energy but some kind of facilitated diffusion because water is polar, so it does not interact with these middle regions here. So protein channels themselves, uh, they can transport things in or out. If we're talking about an action potential, it's a gated protein channel, so there's a little bit more control there. They can be signal receptors, so proteins on the outside of this thing can receive a signal, and it trans the transduction pathway carries on from there. So this would be like a G protein. Uh, so let me mark that up here so we don't forget. So this could be a G protein. And the G protein is activated by some kind of signal receptor. So some kind of ligand binds out here, activates a G protein. G protein gets phosphorylated, so that's a phosphate group. This would be an ATP, right? Uh, and then your signal can carry on down to get the appropriate response. So signal receptors are a big, big deal on the cell membrane. That could be internal or external membrane. So if you're looking at um, an internal um, signal, uh, it could be a, a signal that's carried from the extracellular membrane all the way down into that internal membrane. So it would be like a eukaryotic organelle of some kind. They can be signal carriers. So it can transmit that signal across the membrane as well, to the left or to the right, you, again, using a sp specific mechanism based on whatever uh, that process is. You can also have ATP synthesis, and we're going to uh, look at that when we talk about the mitochondria and chloroplast, or you could have cell identifiers. So on your cell membrane, you also have these, these, uh, these are carbs, carbohydrates. If carbs are attached to a lipid, it's a glycolipid, or if it's attached to a protein, it'd be like a glycoprotein, like that guy right there. Um, and those are usually used for cell identification. They identify self. Um, and so in your body, you've got these identifiers on your cells. Anything that does not have that identifier is considered a pathogen or an antigen of some kind, and your body destroys it. Um, and so this is all happening on the membrane. Now, when we're talking specifics, Remember, the mitochondria is in every kind of eukaryotic cell. Um, there are inner and outer membranes. The outer membrane, right, it uh, keeps the mitochondria, like, as itself. And then the inner membrane is where the electron transport chain happens. So the electron transport, this is where ATP is produced in the process. So that membrane has channels that pass an electron. So if here's your membrane, we've got these channels. We can take an electron and pump it up and it kind of goes down through the membrane. On one end, we have an ATP synthase. That ATP synthase will pump um, sodium ions back into the matrix and we get ADP phosphorylated 
into ATP using the potential energy from that sodium as it rushes back in. So go look at your, your respiration notes for the mitochondria. Chloroplast does something similar, only this time we are looking at um, producing glucose. We need to use ATP to do that. So the chloroplast captures sunlight in the photosystems, and that pumps very similarly to the mitochondria. There's internal membranes here, the thylakoids stacked up in the grana. These thylakoids, they receive uh, energy from sunlight, and they pump ions up across the membrane and let them travel down um, the electron transport chain, and that fixes carbon into glucose, and that glucose is then used for one of two things. It can become cellulose, building a cell wall, or it can get used in the mitochondria um, to maintain homeostasis. It's going to use in respiration. Um, so there's a lot here. Again, remember, this is meant to be a review. If you need something more specific, go back and look at the cell structures playlist in YouTube. Uh, otherwise, thanks for watching.